um, because it's the, the most critical skill, uh, and also because we now know, in fact, we've known this for a while, that children who develop response inhibition at an early age tend to do better throughout life than children who are slow to come to this skill. Um, and there's a lot of longitudinal research to support this, but probably the best known research is the marshmallow test. How many are familiar with the marshmallow test? Okay. Let me give you some background, and those of you who aren't familiar with it will, will learn uh, about the marshmallow test through this background information I'm going to give you. And I remember reading about it back when I was in graduate school, so that's how old the, the original study was done. It was done by a guy named Walter Michel, who was a, social, was a researcher, a personality psychologist working at Stanford University. Um, and I heard an interview with him on an NPR program called Radio Lab, where the interviewer was asking him, okay, so how did you come up with the idea for this study? And I just found it very interesting. Because here's, here's how it happened. At the time he came up with the idea, he had two young daughters. Um, his older one was four, and the other one, I can't remember, the other one was a little younger than that. And as he watched those two daughters, he realized that his four-year-old is better at waiting for things, what he called delayed gratification, uh, than his younger daughter was. And that got him curious. And, and so he sort of asked himself, when do kids develop the ability to wait? Uh, and so he got permission from Stanford, because his daughter went to the Stanford Lab School. He got permission from Stanford to go in and do the study with her, her classmates, basically. And so what he did was he, he brought kids one at a time into this empty lab room, and he had a plate with a marshmallow on it. And he held out the marshmallow, the plate to the child, and said, here's a marshmallow. You can eat this now if you want, but I'll tell you what, I have to leave the room for a few minutes, so if you're able to wait until I come back to eat that marshmallow, I'll give you a second marshmallow. Okay, so the child, I mean, even four-year-olds know that two is better than one. So he leaves the marshmallow behind, and he goes out of the room, and he goes behind a one-way mirror and watches to see what happens. Um, some of those kids pop that marshmallow in their mouths as soon as his back was turned. <laughs> Other kids were able to wait. He stayed away 15 minutes, which is a very long time. The average four-year-old, or the average time that four-year-olds could wait was seven minutes. But some of those kids were able to wait the full 15 minutes. Uh, OK, so fast forward 12 years. <laughs> His daughter is still at that lab school. Um, and he's, he's, she's now 16. He's listening to her talk about her classmates. And he's, as she's talking, he's realizing, wait, I know those kids. You know, they were all in the marshmallow test. Uh, and then he listens some more, and she's talking about which kids are doing well and which kids are struggling. And this hypothesis worms in his head, and he basically says, the kids who could wait at age four seem to be the ones who are doing better now. The kids who couldn't wait seem to be struggling in school. Uh, and so again, he got permission from Stanford to, to look at those kids all over again. He didn't redo the test, but he did extensive interviews with their parents. He looked at their academic records, grade point average, discipline referrals. SAT scores. He looked to see which kids have been in trouble with the law, speeding tickets, unwanted pregnancies, I mean, all of those things. And pretty much across the board, the kids who could wait that full 15 minutes at age four were doing significantly better than the kids who couldn't wait. Um, the one hard statistic that I remember is verbal SAT scores 210 points higher for the kids who could wait. And if you think, well, these are all kids, they all go to the Stanford Lab School, so chances are most of them are children of Stanford professors. You know, it's a skewed population to start with, and to me that makes that verbal SAT difference even more impressive. Uh, and so the theme of the NPR interview that I was listening to, was the free theme of that program was predeterminism. And so the interviewer then said to Michelle, so you're telling me that at age four we can predict which kids are going to be successful and which kids aren't? You know, should we just throw in the towel now? And Michelle said something really important. <clears throat> he basically said, no, here's what we need to do. We need to look at what are the strategies that the kids who could wait are using to enable them to wait that full 15 minutes, because I think we can teach those strategies. And if you go to YouTube and type in marshmallow test, um, you can see some great examples of this. It's obviously not the original study, but people keep replicating it because it's kind of adorable. Um, but if you look, you'll see what strategies some kids are using. You know, some kids turn their back to the marshmallow so they can't see it. Other kids do this dance to distract themselves um, while they're waiting. Other kids say, don't eat the marshmallow, don't eat the marshmallow. So all of those are strategies. Okay, so in 2013, Sesame Street hired Walter Michelle as a consultant. 
He said, we want to teach kids to wait. We want to teach kids impulse control, delayed gratification, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and so in the, the they're, they're, he's still working for them. So they have created two full seasons of a wide variety of vignettes and skits involving any number of Sesame Street characters teaching kids to wait. <laughs>